the most important factor in harvesting cannabis is determining when to harvest. And while the actual process of harvesting is quite simple, the way you harvest should depend on how you plan on processing your buds. For experienced growers, when to harvest typically comes down to personal preference. As the longer you wait to harvest, the larger the buds will be at the cost of a slightly lower overall cannabinoid content. But generally, most people will wait for the bud development to peak before deciding to harvest. And the signs for this are when over half the white hairs on the buds have shriveled up to a darker color, the buds are firm and not spongy when squeezed, and when magnified, most of the trichomes are cloudy in appearance, with some possibly starting to turn amber, especially those on the sugar leaves that have the most exposure to the light. Oftentimes, new growers will be tempted to harvest as early as possible, especially when one but not all of these criteria are met. So if you're still not sure, the age-old device of waiting one to two weeks from when you think you should harvest is a good place to start. Either way though, there's usually a good window of about two to three weeks when the bud size starts to level off. So don't stress too much about timing it perfectly. While there's a ton of different ways to harvest a cannabis plant, the way you choose will affect your trimming option. So let's work backwards to find out the best harvest method for your situation. Trimming your plants is a completely optional step that's done to both increase the total percentages of cannabinoid content of the buds and to improve its visual aesthetic. It's what most people often think of when they imagine what a cannabis plant looks like. Not this, but this. And this increases the cannabinoid content because the bulk of the trichomes are on the inner walls of the buds. So even if the sugar leaves and fan leaves poking out the buds are coated in trichomes, it's still not as potent as the rest of the bud. So by removing these parts, it makes for an overall stronger final product. If you're trimming by hand, the easiest way to do so is to keep the buds attached to the stems because this way you won't need to handle them directly, preventing any damage to the buds and trichomes. This means that the plant should be harvested either stem by stem or in its entirety. And to do so, you'll wanna first remove all the large fan leaves before cutting it down, since these are easily accessible when the plant is upright. If removing the plant stem by stem, you can make it easier to hang by ensuring each stem has either a side stem coming from the base of it to create a natural hook, and if it's not available, then to cut a piece of the main stem along with the side stem to create a natural hook. Otherwise, you can just cut down the entire plant all at once, and both of these will require a good pair of bypass shears to do so. To trim the buds, Start first with the stem upside down and use a pruning snip to cut off the two small leaves that are usually found at the base of each bud site. Now you can focus on the larger leaves of the buds which will have multiple blades coming out of them and can sometimes be removed at its base by pulling slightly on the leaves to expose the stem connecting it. If that's not possible though, manicuring these leaves down to the base of the bud along with the rest of the single sugar leaves poking out of the buds is the final step before the bud can be dried. This trimming method is known as wet trimming, and it's easier to do since you have greater access to the individual leaves while they're still hydrated. It also gives you more room to dry your plants, since a lot of the plant material will be removed by the time the trimming is done. 
and because all the leaves poking out will be cut short, the buds will dry faster, which can be a pro or con, depending on your environment. Trimming is a tedious process though, and wet trimming does require it to be front loaded, as it needs to be done right after harvest. So if you want to take it slower, dry trimming is just that, since even though you have plenty of time after the plant is dried, you'll need it because dry trimming is more time consuming. This is because all the leaves that are left on the plant will curl inwards, both protecting the bud as it dries, but making it harder to remove. The trichomes on the buds are also more brittle at this point, so more of it will fall off during dry trimming. However, if you save and process the trimmings, then this isn't much of an issue, since you're still going to be using whatever falls off. Now, if you're trimming with an automatic trimmer, such as a trim bowl, you'll need to remove the buds individually off the plant before they can be processed. This does make the overall harvesting process easier, since only the buds need to be taken off the plant, so the fan leaves don't need to be removed. And once the buds have been removed, you can run it through your automatic trimmer first before drying them or after they're dried, depending on if you're using a wet automatic trimmer, a dry automatic trimmer, or one that's capable of doing both. Of course, this is only half the puzzle though, and in the next chapter, we'll be covering the other half of the process.